Justin's rucksack is actually just okay, depending on what you use it for. I own a lot of Filson bags. I've actually taken this bag around Mexico on a recent trip down there. I've used a journeyman backpack for years. I use a duffel every time I travel. I got the thousand dollar briefcase, which was, it was okay. It was right. By and large, I think Filson makes the coolest bags in the game, but the rucksack just isn't as functional as I would have liked. Let's take a close look and you'll see why. Filson, if you're not familiar with the brand, is a company that used to outfit miners headed to Alaska's gold rush. When it was founded in 1897, actually, it was called CC Filson's Pioneer Alaska clothing and blanket manufacturer. Today, people don't use them for hiking the Yukon as much as they use them for looking really cool in Manhattan. And to be clear, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The products are typically really well designed and really overpriced. I always say that you're never happy you paid for a Filson product, but you're glad that you own it. This bag is actually the only thing Filson has ever sent me for free to review. Unfortunately, it's my least favorite bag, so they may never talk to me again, but you might like it. This is a very simple bag. While the journeyman has a laptop sleeve and interior pockets and water bottle holders, the rucksack is just this big old cavity here on the inside. You know, there's an open pocket on the back, which you can't put much in before it's too uncomfortable on your back, but you know, like a wallet or a slim book can work. And there are these two front pockets. Uh, that's it. It's, it's very rainproof with this big old flap that you have to buckle down every time you use it. But you also have to buckle this big old flap down every time you use it. Otherwise the buckles like jangle around, which is annoying. I've tried it. So every time you want to get something out of the bag, even out of the, the front pockets here, you have to go through this whole rigmarole of like unbuckling and rebuckling. Now you can leave it really loosely buckled on like just like the, the front one if you want. And then I guess you can still get stuff out but it's just not the most practical design for getting anything out of it. But let's talk about the materials though. The materials are great. The Twell is from England actually, it's made by British Millerin. And whereas many of the company's other bags, like my gentleman backpack, are made of tin cloth, which is their name for waxed canvas, this is Twell. So both canvas and Twell are both types of really densely woven tear resistant cotton. Canvas is smoother and plainer to look at, while Twill is woven into more complex textured structures. So if you're comparing it with the Genuine, you can see the diagonal lines running down the Twill here. You don't see that in the canvas. The tin cloth is 14 ounces per square yard, but the rugged Twill, well, it depends on the product actually. Like their rugged Twill briefcase, which is really famous. For that one, you want a lighter and more flexible Twill because it's like quite small. But their rugged Twill on like a duffel bag and on this is 20 to 22 ounces per square yard. So it's like the thickest and burliest fabric that they use. Contrary to popular belief, this tool actually is slightly waxed. It's not as waxed as their tin cloth though. It's a superficial application called an aqueous wax finish. It doesn't provide a ton of water resistance, although it's already very water resistant because the fabric is so dense. The point of the uh, light aqueous wax finish is to help it to patina. So like that's gonna help it like have some fluctuations and variations in color as it ages. Basically it, it's for aesthetics. It's gonna make it look better as it ages. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people actually sell old Filson bags for a profit. Like it's one of the few things that actually increase in value as they age because people love the look of old Filson products. The leather, meanwhile, is vegetable tan leather from Pennsylvania's Wicked and Craig. So it's a super high quality leather that'll last forever, age really well as well. The leather is really, really gorgeous. The price is $395 for this bag. It's the same price as the Journeyman backpack. I'm pretty sure the rucksack used to be cheaper. It was actually under $300 many years ago and not too long ago it was cheaper than the Journeyman, but they're the same price now. Filson stuff is expensive, but I actually, I encourage you to shop around for American made canvas and leather bags because they're not usually much cheaper. I've got an article in the description below with a dozen good competitors to Filson. And if you're prioritizing made in America, you're unlikely to get anything for under 300 bucks in fairness to Filson. So it's expensive, but that is just, that's this type of product is expensive. Okay. So what do I think of the bag? I don't like it and wouldn't recommend it. It's not without its pros. The materials like the twill and the leather are primo, the top of the line, the best of the best. The bag will age really, really well. It looks pretty cool. Like it's a bag that doesn't make you look like a student or like you're going camping, at least not too much. And it's very pickpocket proof. Like it's a very, very secure bag. These belts will keep anyone out of it. If you're in a tourist area, it's good. Like it's a good travel bag in that regard. There's also a downside though. As someone who has been traveling around in it, it's more than a little frustrating that it takes so long to get into the bag when you're on the go and you have to buckle it closed every single time you want to get moving again. Like it's not a good everyday carry bag because it's annoying to open and close, even though that makes it, again, very secure. 
You can buckle it very loosely like this, I suppose. So like, you know, maybe you think I'm being too harsh in the bag. It's still not very easy to get stuff out of it, especially if you've got a book. Like that's gonna get stuck on these belts here though, right? But maybe you think I'm being too harsh on it because of how annoying it is to get in and out of it. Fine, but there are other problems with this bag. Like if you stuff a lot of things in the bag, then numerous problems arise. Number one, the straps are attached pretty far down its back. So when it's fuller, even if you're using the tightest setting on the shoulder straps, the top of the bag pulls away from your torso and falls kind of weird. Like the weight distribution is weird. It doesn't feel good on your back. Especially if you, have, if you have like shoes in the bag, they tend to jut out into your back a bit because the back of the bag isn't very structured. Unlike the superior journeyman backpack. So it carries weight weirdly, which is far from ideal for a backpack. But number two, the straps are unlined. So it's incredibly uncomfortable once there's any amount of weight here. If you're wearing a thin summery shirt with this bag, as I was on the weekend, it cuts right into your shoulders. I'm in the middle of listing lots of folks right now, but that might be the biggest issue. Like it, it hurts to use. It's a pretty big downside. The third issue that arises when there's lots of stuff in the bag is that the squat flat appearance gets emphasized. And I don't know about you guys, but I was using this bag for a while before I realized I've never had a backpack that's wider than it is tall. And my girlfriend said the one thing you never wanna hear a girl say about something you're wearing. When she saw how squat it is and how high up the back it sits, she said, quote, it looks feminine, like a bundled up ball attached to the top of your back. I mean, as soon as she said it, I was like, Crap, you're right, I, I can see what you mean. It looks like the kind of backpacks that girls wear. That is obviously very subjective, but I mean, you, know, you don't like to hear that. Another downside with this bag, it's not all that big for something called a rucksack. Like it only stores 21 liters. One of the biggest deals I think is that there are no internal compartments at all. Like nothing for your keys or anything, but especially, and this is a huge one for me, there's no laptop sleeve. I know that it's an old timey bag and everything, but no bag should be without a laptop sleeve now, right? And that simple fact alone easily reduced the number of times I was able to use this bag by like 80%. I always have my laptop with me and that was really, really annoying. People on Philson's review site talk about using this bag to carry their laptops and this and that, but like they must be placing it and protecting it with their clothes or something, cause there's no sleeve. And if I'm not bringing a bunch of clothes to swaddle a laptop in, then I'm not bringing it out in this twill bag. I have still used this bag if I'm going somewhere without my laptop. Like when I spend the night at a friend's place and I'm just bringing a change of clothes and my toothbrush, yeah, all right, it's fine. It's okay for an overnighter. If I'm just bringing some clothes and toiletries and no laptop, sure. All right, but there are too many things the bag is bad at for me to recommend it, unless your priority is something that can't be pickpocketed. In that regard, it's Filson's most secure bag. Nonetheless, if that was your priority, I'd still tell you to buy something with some shoulder padding and with a laptop sleeve. All right, that's my review of Filson's rucksack. Uh, the journeyman solves just about all the problems that I was complaining about with this. It's got a more structured back, got a laptop sleeve, it's got uh, places, it's got an internal pocket and everything for your keys. Uh, it is easy to open on the go. All these other shoes. And it's also very water resistant as well, even though it doesn't have this big flap because it's got a storm flap. I like the Journeyman way, way better. If you're getting a Filson bag, I suggest getting that one instead. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I, it breaks my heart, especially because like I said, this is the first thing that Filson's ever given me for free. So I wanted it to be a nice review for them. So they would want to keep giving me free stuff. Unfortunately, I don't like the bag, but let me know in the description below, in the comments below rather, uh, if you like the bag and why. And um, make sure you subscribe as well, because I got a lot more bags and jackets and jeans and boots and stuff coming up. Probably no more free fills and stuff, but you know, I'll keep buying the stuff that I want to review anyway.